The 2020 Nobel laureates can explain why last week a Charizard sold for $226,000 and they are the reason why your phone is working right now. Now, if you're wondering why I look really disheveled even by economist standards, that's because it's about 4.45 in the morning. This is me an hour ago getting up to watch the live announcement of the Nobel Prize and this is me an hour before that waking up at 2.27 in the morning because I was just so excited for this announcement I couldn't sleep. That has to earn your subscription, right? Please? Now I have to find some way to explain auction theory to you and get this video filmed, edited, and posted in time for the rest of the world to wake up and see this thing all without waking up my family. Imagine you assemble an auction with a bunch of people who are going to be bidding on a Charizard. Now obviously this is not the super rare Charizard that is fetched at auctions today, but it's what I have, so let's work with it. The people at this auction are all gonna have a value that they put on this Charizard. There's gonna be personal meaning to it. That's gonna be their private value, but there's also a common value. All of them are gonna have this idea of what the market values this at, and they're gonna be willing to pay for this in part on what they think the market is willing to pay for it as well. Well, some of these people might not care for this Charizard at all. They're not gonna be willing to participate in this auction. And then there's gonna be some people who are absolutely in love Love with it and they're willing to drop a ton of money on it so that person wins the auction but the problem now is the fact that they paid the most for this charizard indicates that they overvalued the charizard that they are the only person that thinks the charizard is worth this much so they probably paid too much for it this phenomenon is called the winner's curse where somebody overvalued the object relative to the rest of the market and they paid too much for it. This was discovered and proved by Wilson back in the late 60s. And this was a huge contribution to understanding auction theory and really economics generally. Then Milgram later came along and contributed to this in at least the way that I interpret it. And it's called the no trade theorem, which he proved with Nancy Stokey. The no trade theorem is why I advise my son to be careful about trading Pokemon cards. You wanna be careful when one of your friends comes up to you and says, hey, I will trade you my card for your card. Because if they want to trade, that probably means they know something about your card that you don't. And that would make you a loser for making that trade. And so there's this issue on whether people or why people trade at all if markets have all the information. It must be the case that somebody willing to trade with me has information that I don't have. Now, if you're interested in understanding more about like how we evaluate prices for things like Pokemon cards, I recommend you check out the video that I just published a week ago, which is super interesting because it explains a little bit about Pokemon card pricing and happened the same week that somebody paid $220,000 for a first edition Charizard card. It happened to be Logic, the rapper, in an auction. What perfect timing for this Nobel Prize. Now let's get to why these economists are responsible for your phone working today. In the early 1990s, there was a huge surge in demand for radio broadcast signals. Those radio broadcast signals are the signals that communicate to your cell phone, right? 3G, 4G, 5G, any type of those wireless symbols, anything that carries this signal across the way those are radio broadband signals and there was a huge demand for them because obviously technology was growing and improving getting ready for us to actually use that signal well before the 1990s the government would sell this signal but in a really weird way they would do it through what we would call beauty contests where you basically just apply and say like here's why I need this and please wink wink give it to me and don't pay any attention to that thing coming underneath the table or they would do it just through a lottery where people would randomly receive these now neither of these are a very efficient way to allocate goods in a market that values these things, right? In beauty contests, you're just giving it to the person that you like the most or is willing to sweeten the deal the most. That's hugely inefficient. In a lottery, it's at least random, so you're not dealing with these inefficiencies through the beauty contest aspect, but then you're gonna have the secondary market where people are reallocating things. It's just not as efficient 
either. So how could we better allocate broadband signal? Well, Milgram and Wilson were part of designing these auctions that would sell off these signals. It's a very complex process because they're interdependent values. There's this common value issue like with the Charizard. Basically, you want to be able to get a certain amount of broadband and you want to make sure that you can get these certain areas. But the engineering of it all is really hard for me to get at, at now five o'clock in the morning. So I'm not gonna dive into all the complexities behind these auctions. But the idea is we need to sell this off and we need to make sure it goes to the people who value it the most. And in the same way, not create a monopoly, right? Like we could have somebody come in and just buy up everything, maximize revenue, but now they're a monopoly and they own everything. That's not how we want things allocated. We want things allocated efficiently and fairly with the population benefiting from it. So Milgram, Wilson, and a bunch of other economists come in and they help design these auctions that are still used today. We still are auctioning off 5G signals using the auctions that were designed. Maybe not the exact same auction, but Milgram and Wilson were the ones influencing the design of these auctions. And that's really what makes this Nobel Prize so exciting. I love love when we get to see people receive the prize for how they actually shape the world. This is how economics is shaping the world. It's part of a grander field called market design where we actually try to figure out not just let's have things go crazy and hopefully things work out the best way they can under these markets, but let's design the market that will achieve the best outcomes for the population we're trying to serve. These people are actually influencing the world. They're like the engineers of the economics world. It's so exciting to see how this goes. I hope it inspires people to get into economics and see how it actually influences our world. It's amazing stuff. If you are interested in learning more about economics, you should definitely subscribe like I asked or check out some of these other videos on economics topics because we are a community of people interested in and excited about economics. We will see you in the next week of Market Power when my hair looks much better than it does right now.